Tuesday devotion for Holy Week is John 12, 20 to 36. And the main point is that the gospel requires death. First, Jesus' death for us, but then our own death to self in following Jesus. But glory comes in the end. The passage starts in a rather odd way. These Greeks are in Jerusalem, and they have this desire to see Jesus. So they share that with Philip, and Philip share, tells that to Andrew. And then Philip and Andrew together go to Jesus and share the, this with Jesus, and Jesus responds. But Jesus' response doesn't have anything to do with the Greeks. I think it's because Jesus is feeling the weight of the cross. His hour has now come. It's, it's imminent right upon him. And he's feeling the gravity, the weight upon his soul, upon his body, his mind, his heart. And so his response to Philip and Andrew is actually deep waters of the cross, of what he's about to do. And so I want us to look at four aspects in verses 24 to 27 of Jesus' response to Philip and Andrew. And the first one's about Jesus and his death. The second and the third are about us and our responding to that. And the fourth one is back about Jesus. So in verse 24, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus is saying that that he must de die for us to bring about salvation, that it is essential, it is necessary, and that if Jesus doesn't go to the cross, then there is no salvation. If he doesn't go to the cross, then he stays alone. That grain of wheat is going to be alone by itself, and we're alone, and we're separated alone. If Jesus doesn't go to the cross, there is no fruit of salvation that is accomplished. There's no gathering in of you or me or the Greeks or anyone. But Jesus does go to the cross, and so he does reap a harvest, a, f a fruit of salvation through his work on the cross. The, Jesus' death is absolutely essential to bringing about salvation for you and for me. And then in verse 25, Jesus switches to speak about us. He says, whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Jesus is speaking about you and me, and how will we respond to him? Will we put to death our uh, self-orientation in order that we might follow him? Jesus knows that this is a hard issue. Nobody wants to die. We don't want to die to our self-autonomy. But Jesus puts it in the most stark binary terms, either Either you say, I'm still going to control my life, and Jesus says, you'll lose your life then. Or you can die to self and entrust yourself to me, and I will keep your life for you forever, for eternity. It's, it's a decision every person must make. It's, it's a hard decision. It's put in hard terms, but it's one or the other. And so Jesus is saying, I'm going to die for my people if you want to be part of that you need to die to self to be, to be part of that. In verse 26, it's also about us. It says, If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, my Father will honor him. Here, Jesus is pressing ahead to say, what does discipleship look like? And he's picking up that familiar language from the Synoptic Gospels of deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Of course, when he says take up your cross, it means take up that element of execution, of dying to self and following me. But there's also a promise here. Where I am, there my servant will be also. Our dying to self and following Jesus and trusting ourselves to him is the path for intimacy with him. And then verse 27 comes back to Jesus. He says, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. First, Jesus is troubled, distraught. He feels the pressure of the situation he's upon him. 
remember, he's, he hasn't even been arrested yet. It's, this is, he knows what's coming. And so there's this weight, this gravity upon him. My soul is troubled, he says. But he's always been in contact with his father in prayer, but he, he's saying out loud, should I ask Father, save me from this hour? He, it's, this is going to be painful and dreadful. He doesn't want to do it, but I came for this hour. I came to go to the cross, to win salvation, to bear fruit of salvation for all my people. And so we see here Jesus affirming that how difficult this is going to be, but the intentionality of Jesus, I came for this very purpose, to go to the cross, to win salvation for my people. And so death is required in the gospel. The death of Jesus for us and our own death in following him, death to self to follow him. But glory is also peppered through this passage. In verse 23, it says, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, because going to the cross will bring glory to God, but the resurrection, Jesus, the Son of Man, will receive glory by being resurrected victoriously. And then in verse 28, Jesus says, Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven and said, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it. God's plan of salvation brings God glory. And even in 26, at the end, it says, If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Right? There's glory that comes to Jesus' followers who are serving him and are, are in allegiance and loyalty to him, worshiping him. The Father will honor them. So it's a foretaste of the glory that uh, all God's people will experience in the full resurrection. And so... Jesus kind of summarizes all of this together in uh, verse 32 when he says, And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Just to close, what should we be thinking from this passage? We should spend some time reflecting on how essential the death of Jesus is for our salvation. That it's a necessity, that there's no other way around it. Verse 24 outlines that uh, very clearly. What should we be feeling? I think in verse 27, we should reflect on how Jesus' soul was so troubled, even at this point before going to the cross. We get a sense there of the weight and the burden that Jesus undertook to win our salvation and what it cost him. What should we do with this passage? We should realize that there's a choice that Jesus lays out for us. Will we save our own life or will we die to self and entrust our life to Jesus? Will we serve him? Will we follow him? Will we take up our cross and go where he leads us? Thanks be to God for Jesus, our faithful Savior, who walks with us and has done everything necessary to win our salvation.